Howdy, partners. Well, you say you're looking to learn how to play Deadlands Blood Drive? <laughs> you came to the right place. Come on in, make yourself cozy. See if we can't get you through this. Howdy, YouTube, and uh, welcome to another video on uh, Deadlands Blood Drive. This time around, uh, we're doing a, a basically an instructional video, maybe for players. Obviously, GMs are welcome here because there's gonna be information that they can uh, grab from this, but uh, we're not gonna have any spoilers in this video. So, players are welcome. You guys don't hear that very often. Usually it's, get out! <laughs> um, anyway, this is not gonna be all encompassing, obviously, because for one thing, we don't wanna have spoilers. But also, uh, I'm just gonna go into minor details of certain things. Some of it's gonna be up to you to figure out, especially during like the character creation part. Um, let's talk about what you need. You don't need the Blood Drive book. As a matter of fact, you don't want to look at the Blood Drive book because uh, that can take away from your game experience and that would have definite spoilers. Um, you do need a copy of the Savage Worlds um, Adventure Edition Core Rule Book. It also comes in PDF, um, or maybe your uh, marshal or GM has a copy that you can borrow for character creation, but also to learn about the game and the way that the game mechanics work. You'll also either need a copy of the Deadlands core rules, or again, your uh, the copy that your marshal has, so that you can look at, because there's new edges and hindrances and stuff during character creation, we'll talk briefly about that, but you will need access to that to get additional information. The one caveat to that is if you're using savaged.us, which is something that I'll talk about a little bit later in the video, um, well, then you may not need access to those books because it makes creation really easy. However, when you level and stuff like that, you are gonna wanna take uh, an opportunity to look at edges and hindrances that are available. What else do you need? A pencil. <laughs> um, it's a good idea to take notes and to uh, track things that are going on in the game and a pencil comes in really handy for that. Uh, another uh, really nice to have is a dice tray, but it's not a must. Ooh, look, there's even a pencil in my, this is how important the pencil is. It's inside my uh, dice tray. But regardless of whether you get a tray or not, you will need dice. And it's a standard set of dice. You know, the D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, and D20. The D20 is not really used that much, except for maybe on some tables. But um, the standard set just comes with all, all of those dice. The other thing that you need is an extra D6. And that's because we've got this thing called a wild die in Savage Worlds. Um, also, a lot of times when you get a raise on your attacks, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but you get to uh, roll extra damage and sometimes that uh, uh, D6 comes in really handy for that as well. Um, the other thing, and this is game dependent, you check in with your marshal and see if uh, you're going to be using um, a, a map and terrain. If you are, you might want to invest in a mini. Now. That's not the mini that you want to use, <laughs> but he's the mini that I had sitting right here. Um, and actually he's more of a medium, not a mini. But um, uh, Hero Forge does a good job of uh, creating uh, Western style uh, characters. So I highly recommend that you check them out. All right, let's move on to the map. Um, I sort of cut this and actually I'll just put this up on the screen so that I don't have to hold it here for you guys but I uh, cut this out of the map that comes with uh, Deadlands. It's essentially a, ma a map of the entire uh, Weird West. But this is the area that your particular game, when you're running uh, Blood Drive, will kind of be in, at least um, from the start. And the thing that I want to point out is, uh, you want to familiarize yourself a little bit with things like the Bayou Vermilion, which is a railroad. It's the line going through there. Also the Lone Star and the Wasatch Rail. Those are all probably going to come into play and it's something that you as a player would be familiar with just from uh, being in this area and stuff is that there are uh, railroads that... oh that's the puppy i might have to take a break here in a minute and give him a treat um so sutter's flats 
is uh, where this game starts out. And it's a uh, little town right on the uh, um, Rio Grande River, which is the Mexican border. It's actually about 10 miles from the Mexican border. It's about 100 miles west of San Antonio, and as you can see, just north of Laredo. And the reason why I point that out, and what I think is important here, is that in the book, in the very beginning, you guys are going to need to come up with a re reason as a player, like part of your background story. like. How did you end up in Sutter's uh, flats? And the book gives you a couple of options, but since you guys don't have uh, access to the book, and I don't think that this is a spoiler, I thought I would tell you some of those things. So for whatever reason, it turns out that you guys end up in uh, Sutter's flats. And like I say, you need to come up with that reason. Some ideas for that could be, maybe you're riding through on your way north from Laredo. Maybe you've been drawn near the border, hunting down a bounty, or you might be on the run. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity for that kind of scenario. Maybe you came from a neighboring city like San Antonio or Houston, or even as far as Dallas or El Paso. Um, maybe you're escaping across the border from Mexico into Texas. It could be any number of things, but you guys need to think about that and kind of incorporate it into your story. What brings you to Sutter Flats? So, um, next we're going to look at uh, what, what the, uh, the actual um, setting is about. Uh, not, not to spoil anything, you're going to hear this on session zero anyway, so just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, you're going to be uh, going on a cattle drive. And um, the, uh, I'll, I'll put up the cattle drive crew right here because I just wanted to talk about a couple things for you so that you'd have some familiarity again to help you as this uh, thing starts out. Uh, you've got up front in a cattle drive is the trail boss and that's the head honcho or lead rider. They ride at the front and the entire group uh, determines the direction, controlling the speed and giving cattle something to follow. Basically everyone on the crew reports to the trail boss. And then you've got the point riders and they basically ride right near the uh, trail boss up at the front of the herd. It's an honored position on the drive. This job is reserved for more experienced hands who know the country through which they are traveling. And then behind them are the swing riders. They ride closely along each side of the herd, about a third of the way back from the point rider. Their responsibility is to keep the herd together, and they're constantly on the lookout for any animals that might try to break away. They're also instrumental in backing up the point riders as the herd turns. If the point man leaves his position, a swing rider will ride instead um, until he returns. And then behind them, you've got the flank riders, and they ride on each side of the herd near the rear, uh, about two thirds of the way back. Their role is to back the swing riders up and keep the cattle bunched, preventing the back of the herd from fanning out. And then at the very back, you've got the drag riders. Behind, uh, they're behind the herd to keep it moving, pushing the slower animals forward because of the exhausting work and insufferable dust. This unpleasant job is typically reserved for green cowboys. However, the drag riders should also be handy with a six shooter and or rifle as they protect the rear of the herd. All right, gave the puppy a treat. The uh, wrangler is responsible for taking care of the drive's remuda making sure the horses are fed and doctored. He typically drives the horses with the wagon as his secondary duties include helping the cook rustle firewood, unhook the team, or any other odd jobs around the camp. A remuda is a herd of horses from which ranch hands select their mounts for the day. The term originated back in the days of long cattle drives when cowboys needed ready access to fresh trained horses. During the historic cattle drive era, each cowboy required about six horses on a cattle drive switching animals daily or even twice daily. Thus, the spare horses must be kept close to the cattle herd and moved along with the cattle so to be available to riders as needed. The word is Spanish, by the way. It's a derivation for remount or change of horses or fresh mount. <laughs> I guess remuda is just easier for them to say, but also maybe because they're down south and everything close to the border, they use the Spanish word. Um, it's still commonly used in the American West, and the individual in charge of the remuda is generally known as a wrangler. Uh, last thing is the chuck wagon, and the chuck wagon is kind of off to the side there. You see up front 
It's named after its inventor, Charles Chuck Goodnight, a Texas rancher and co-founder of the Goodnight Loving Trail. This wagon has all the food and kitchen supplies for the entire group. That's the entire cattle drive crew in a nutshell. Um, and so that's basically the one tiny bit of a spoiler to let you guys know that uh, that's why you've gathered in Sutter's uh, flats. Let's, uh, let's take a look now at the character sheet. Um, this, by the way, is another thing that you need that I didn't mention. It's available for free as a PDF on the uh, PEG site, peginc.com. And um, you can also fill out the form by going to savage.us. Now, savage.us is a free site. However, uh, there is a wildcard membership that you need to be able to use the Deadlands character sheet. Um, and that membership costs $30 a year. But here's the good news. Recently, I noticed um, they s have started allowing a campaign creation, which means that only one person needs to have that membership for your entire party. Once that one person has the wildcard membership, any player who joins that campaign can utilize the, the uh, paid benefits, which is really cool, I think. And it's a good step in the right direction. So the character sheet, um, the, the first thing that you want to look at is the hindrances here because by collecting hindrances you get points that you can use for attributes or edges. Uh, major hindrances give you two points and minor hindrances give you one point. I should note that the maximum that you can get from that is four points. Um, and those points can be used to add additional uh, attributes and also edges, like I said. However, for edges and attributes, they when you use hindrance points, they cost two points each. So um, it really only gives you uh, two attribute uh, enhancements or uh, two edges. Um, now let's move over to the attributes. And you can see the standard attributes here, agility, smart, spirit, strength, and vigor. Everybody starts at a D4, but what you need to know is that uh, average for an average human is D6. So in other words, if you're a D4 in smarts, then you're below the average intelligence, just so that you know. But the good news is you start with five points, attribute points, which you can use to increase your D4. Each point that you spend, you can increase a die type. So in other words, because there's five attributes, you could technically be an average person by just using all five of those points and making everything D6, right? Then you would be average in everything. However, most people usually choose something, for instance, if you're a gunslinger and you want agility because that's where shooting is based off of, then you might spend some extra attributes points over there and you might suffer somewhere else, whether it's spirit, strength, or something along those lines. And the same thing goes for any other type of class that you'd be thinking about doing. Remember that you can use your hindrance points over here too. So even though you get uh, start with five attribute points, it's like as if you start with seven, because, and this is the weird part of the math for me, but you get four hindrance points, which become two when you're dealing with attributes. So instead of five points, you would get seven. So you'll be able to boost two other uh, attributes additionally, or add edges. Uh, a lot of people do that. Speaking of edges, it's the same thing. We get over there and you use those uh, hindrance points over there. Um, skills, you start with 12 skill points. And um, as long as your skill is below your attribute that is uh, associated with it, then it only costs one point to increase it. So technically you could increase 12 of your skills. Now you start out unskilled in everything except for the five standard skills, which are athletics, common knowledge, notice, persuasion, and stealth. And you'll see they're already on the character sheet. That's because you started a D4 with those things. Um, oh, by the way, if you're trying to increase a skill above your attribute, then it costs you two points as opposed to one point. So they become more expensive that way. But some people might specialize in something, say for instance, like a gunslinger. If the only agility skill that you wanted to use was shooting, you might pay those two points to go up in uh, shooting just because that's the only one that you're gonna be doing. Um, and then gear, you gotta populate your gear here. And remember to use your Deadlands book as well because there's a lot of items in there that just don't exist in the uh, suede book. 
Uh, starting out, you get $250, but remember that you start with the clothes that are on your back. So don't uh, buy clothes with that $250 unless you're planning on buying something special clothing wise. Uh, also, I should note that you can double your starting funds by spending one point. So you can spend a hindrance point over there and start out with $500 instead of $250. That's just a real quick look at the thing. You know, obviously there's plenty of videos out there that go over in very deep detail how to uh, create your character, but I just wanted to show you guys the character sheet and what you'll be thinking about. Um, obviously my advice to you is uh, there's a beginning section in the suede book that talks about character creation. It's very easy to follow and then uh, utilize the Deadlands book as well to make sure that you're adding the new edges and hindrances and things like that that are available to you. Um, also before I uh, wrap this up I wanted to say if you want to enhance your experience um, I've got three movie recommendations. One's actually a mini-series, and it's mentioned in the uh, Blood Drive uh, book. But um, my three favorite movies that have to do with a uh, trail or cattle drive is uh, Open Range, which is Kevin Costner and Robert Duvall. Fantastic movie. Uh, tons of action and uh, really cool Wild West kind of feel to it. Um, Lonesome Dove, maybe the... Uh, the greatest miniseries ever created about a cattle drive and or Wild West for that matter. That one's uh, Robert Duvall again and also Tommy Lee Jones and they just do some amazing stuff and it can give you some ideas uh, that you can utilize while you're playing as a character you know so that you can help with your role playing so you can get those bennies from the marshal. Um, and then also the Cowboys which uh, is an older movie I think from like 71 that's uh, John Wayne I think it's John Wayne's best, and by the way, I'm a, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm a John Wayne fan, so I've seen a lot of his movies, and by the way, there's more movies than I could watch that John Wayne did. Um, and I wanted to mention, if you'd like a laugh and just something that's a little bit uh, more lighthearted and enjoyable, make sure that you check out City Slickers as well with uh, Billy Crystal. That movie's hilarious. It's a nowadays um, cattle drive but very good and fun to uh, watch. The last thing that I wanted to say, obviously um, it's important that you guys have fun while you're doing this. I want you to remember to be nice to your marshal or your GM. Um, remember that the marshal is actually playing the game with you guys. This is not a, a person who is an adversary. They're not against you. They're playing with you. They're basically a narrator who's also playing the game. And they've invested a lot in the uh, details and everything of the story for you guys. So just remember that. They're not out to get you. They're actually, uh, they're having as much fun as you guys and they're rooting for you as well. A lot of times we kind of forget that as players, but it's true. The uh, GM has as much fun, if not more, than you guys because of the creative background that they've put into the story. Um, and bring snacks. <laughs> Make them Western styled, you know? Bring something fun that's like the Wild West. And if you feel like it, get into character by dressing up a little bit. Even if it's just wearing a cowboy hat or something like that, it can just add a little bit to the spirit of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please comment below and let me know uh, what you guys are doing is player characters and also uh, any tips or uh, ideas that you have for me for future videos. As usual, I appreciate you hanging out with me and have a great day. Thanks for dropping in, partner. I hope you come back again. Definitely, if you dig, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't ever miss an episode. Also, please comment down below. Let me know what you think of this and also what your experience has been. See you on the other side of the sunset.